Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Zina speaking. Today my topic will be about the nasopalatine duct cyst removal together with its complications of removal. This video has been asked by one of my followers to do such a video. And please, if you are new in the channel, so hit the subscribe button down below because this would really help me to grow my channel in order to reach many dental students worldwide. Now, in my previous videos, I talked about what is nasopalatine duct cyst, the causes behind it. So I will not go into details regarding the definition of the nasopalatine duct cyst. I will just do an overview for that. Now, the nasopalatine duct cyst is, a, is the most common non-odontogenic cyst, which is not tooth related. Recurrence rate is very low. Because of that, no intervention is required after the complete removal of the nasoplatine duct cyst. Surgery is done under local anesthesia with nitrous oxide sedation. Now, what is the nasopalatine nerve? We need to understand the nerve before going deep into its removal. So it is a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve that has three branches, as you remember. The ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, and the mandibular nerve. So from the maxillary division, we have the nasopalatine nerve descends from. What it supply? It supplies sensory innervation to the mucosa of the nasal septum, anterior heart palate area as well and the upper anterior teeth, central incisors, lateral incisors, and the canines. All these are supplied by the nasopalatine nerve. Here is a picture showing you the course of the nasopalatine nerve, as you can see, in which it supplies the upper anterior teeth together with the anterior palate only. Here is another picture clarifying for you the course of the nasopalatine nerve. Now, shall we remove the nasopalatine duct cyst? Yes, of course, you need to remove it. Because if you did not remove it, the, it will keep growing in size and it will become very big and in relation to that, it will affect the vital structures on the palate. So removal is mandatory. How we can remove it? Via complete inculation should be done via a palatine or buccal approach. Either you come from the buccal and raise a flap, or either you come from the palate, from the palate and raise a flap. Anyways, it's acceptable for the treatment or removal of the nasopalatine duct cyst. Before the removal of the cyst, we need to inform our patients that there is or there might be a complication during the removal of the nasopalatine duct cyst. What is the complication? We might hit the nasopalatine nerve by mistake. This is seen in many patients. Or we might damage an artery in that area. And you know, if we damage an artery, profuse bleeding will happen. So we need to inform our patients about the complication before starting any treatment. So what happens if the nasopalatine nerve is damaged? There will be reduction in the sensitivity of the front teeth or the heart palate since it supplies the upper anterior teeth together with the anterior heart palate area. Now let's speak regarding the anatomy of the nasopalatine nerve. The nasopalatine nerve enters the nasal cavity via the sphenopalatine foramen. So there is an opening on the palate area. This opening is referred to as the sphenopalatine foramen through which the nasopalatine exits from. Now, of course, if there is a nerve, there is an artery that is associated with it, and the artery has the same name as the nerve. So, 
The nasopalatine artery, which is also known as the sphenopalatine artery, is a branch of the internal maxillary artery. So we're still talking about the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. Now, the nasopalatine artery enters the nasal cavity similar to the nasopalatine nerve via the sphenopalatine foramen. In order to supply what? The frontal, maxillary, ethmoidal, and sphenoidal sinuses, which are the paranasal sinuses. Now, one nasopalatine artery branch descends into the nasopalatine canal in order to anastomose with the descending palatine artery entering the incisive foramen with the nasopalatine nerve. I don't think you understood this, but I will show you a picture in a couple of seconds. You will understand more. The nasopalatine artery enters the incisive foramen in order to join with the nasopalatine nerve. As simple as that. See, as you can see in here, the picture for the incisive foramen. So from the palatine, from posterior to anterior, up to the incisive foramen, the nasopalatine nerve will come and will supply the upper anterior teeth together with the anterior part of the heart palate area, not the posterior. Not only the nasopalatine nerve is there, the also nasopalatine artery, which is also referred to as the sphenopalatine artery as well, all coming from this small point. As you can see, the nasopalatine nerve and the nasopalatine artery or the sphenopalatine artery will enter the nasal cavity via the sphenopalatine foramen. So here, this is a picture showing you the exact location for the sphenopalatine foramen. Now, some patients might say that if the loss of sensation or my nasopalatine nerve is injured, what happens? Will it recover back again? What I will say that the neural recovery process and its impact on sensation in the anterior hard palatal region are still controversial. In our clinical practice, we noticed a distinct recovery period in children compared with adolescents or adults after surgery. So we hypothesized that the sensory innervations of the anterior palate might shift during later childhood and pre-adolescence, which is due to the development of the nasopalatine nerve along with the maxillary growth and permanent teeth eruption. So before removal of the nasopalatine duct cyst, we need to know the age of our patient. If he is a young patient, then the recovery period will be instant or will be immediate for the nasopalatine nerve to recover compared with the older patients. So for the older patients, we need to inform them, inform them that the recovery period for the nasopalatine nerve to recover completely may take one year, two years, we don't know. It's still under uh, review or hypothesis. So we need to inform everything to our uh, patients before starting any treatment or procedure.